All right, everyone. Well, I am the person standing between you and lunch. <laughs> But the good news is, a lot of the speakers who came before me have done almost all of my job for me, so this should be quick. So I'm really delighted to wrap up this uh, educational part of the conference today by talking a little bit more about our research directions in ARVC. And the next, hopefully less than 15 minutes, I'll just recapitulate our approach to research, share a few of our recent research successes um, and our current research emphasis, spend quite a bit of time introducing you to studies enrolling now, and finally, thank you for your research participation over these more than 20 years. Uh, I think the case has been made today already that our entire research program runs on its people. We're really fortunate here at Hopkins to have multidisciplinary research excellence. You have seen these speakers here today, ranging from cardiology, genetics, imaging, engineering, and so on. I think truly one of the keys to our success is our dedicated research staff, students, and fellows. A number of our staff members are sitting right over there today. I imagine you met a lot of them as they checked in, and those of you participating in research this afternoon will surely meet them. Um, and then you've met two of our uh, research fellows today. You met Alessio and Rick, but they're just members of a team, and these are the people who day-to-day -day make the research possible. And um, I will say, probably for the third or fourth time today, the importance of our collaborators. At heart, ARVC is a rare disease. Without working together, we cannot gather enough data to answer meaningful questions that allow for personalized approaches to treatment and development of new therapies. But most important in all of this is our partnership with you. Uh, you all know Crystal. Crystal is the friendly voice on the other end of the phone. She runs our, yes, thank you, yep. <laughs> she runs our registry. She puts together our newsletters. She's my dear colleague for more than 20 years, and without her, I cannot imagine where we'd be. So putting all these pieces together, I said you're the most important part, and that's because our research at heart falls into the general category of precision medicine, Precision medicine is a buzzword, but basically what it means is we start out with data partnerships with patients like you, collect the data, put it in a database, work with these smart research fellows and students to analyze it, report it, and things go around in the system to allow us finally to develop more precise information to improve health. Um, you've heard a couple examples of this today. Um, one very clear example of us getting toward the end of this is Dr. Carrick's uh, presentation of longitudinal risk modeling. Dr. Gasparetti talked us, told you about the Desmoplakin study a little bit earlier in the process. And of course, to make this possible, we invest a lot of time, money, and donations into a research infrastructure. We have an ARVC registry, which is a red cap database linked um, to various electronic medical systems with adjudicated clinical data. We have genotype information, a biobank, ECG voltage, psychosocial well-being data, ICD data, and so on. How you can help. This is the most important slide I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show it to you three times. <laughs> the ARVC registry is the starting point for all our studies. If you think you might be, want to be interested in research, call or email Crystal and consider getting involved. This is how you start your participation in research and we'll be enrolling people in the registry and collecting registry samples today. All right, moving on to sharing our recent research successes and current research emphasis. The first talk today, Dr. Calkins told you we were focusing uh, recently on risk stratification, gene-specific therapy and diagnosis and management, and moving into gene and other patient-specific therapies. I think the speakers before me have made the case for this. You heard already from Dr. Gasparetti and Dr. Carrick about our efforts to enhance risk prediction for arrhythmias. You heard Dr. Chrisman talk about the work we've done on uh, the relevance of PVC count. We also did studies on the importance of EP study and helping us better understand who's at highest risk for sustained ventricular arrhythmias. We have spent a lot of time in the last four years working towards gene-specific diagnosis and management. That's included working with the international community to get a certain sense of gene disease associations with ARVC. 
we've worked with collaborators at Stanford and Geisinger to better understand the genetic architecture of PKP2 cardiomyopathy. Again, critical to, to move towards gene therapy. Um, and we've spent time in the genetic counseling group trying to figure out the best way to get genetic testing done, explained, and efficiently um, incorporated into your medical care. And we've been fortunate to receive um, federal funding for a variety of these efforts. Um, Dr. Delmar did this job for me already. Um, we are eagerly awaiting, I suppose you can see how eager, given he and I both touched on it, to learn the results of the first ARVC clinical trial funded by the NIH. This is the Fleck and I clinical trial he referred to earlier. It was a crossover trial, which means that each patient who enrolled had time both on and off drugs, so they're each, they're, um, every patient is their own control. Uh, and what he didn't necessarily make clear because he was being very modest is the fact that this clinical trial came to fruition was the result of a decade of partnership of patients, lab researchers, specifically Dr. Delmar and Marina Cironi, and ARVC clinicians. Another example of the process from the lab to the patients and clinical researchers and the doctors and hopefully to medical care is our story of studying inflammation. Um, this has been a research effort that's really been championed by Jeff Saffitz, who's the head of the Department of Patholo the Chief of Pathology at Harvard. He worked with Steve Chelko, who's a professor um, now at the University of Florida, used to be here at Johns Hopkins. And they had a series of studies, starting from a tiny study founded by the Aiding Hearts Foundation. I don't know if anyone remembers that group. It was a specific small ARVC group up to an AHA grant, finally a federal grant to look at um, inflammatory pathways in ARVC and other arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathies that were mostly mouse and cellular studies. Which takes me to the next part of my talk, introducing you to studies enrolling now. So the results of all this background research in mice and cells on inflammatory pathways has led to a small um, NIH grant, an NHLBI grant, to look at um, uh, one particular inflammatory pathway that we think may be active in ARVC. This isn't specific for a genotype. We think there's evidence that this plays a role in um, gene-elusive ARVC as well as desmosomal ARVC. And so there's a study right now doing a phase one study to demonstrate safety. That's in controls, not in ARVC patients. And our job here today is to see whether or not indeed preliminary data suggesting that ARVC patients, who are the red dots in this chart, have a higher level of these, they're called SEH relevant regulatory lipids, which I do not have time to explain. It's an inflammatory pathway product, are indeed higher in ARVC patients and people potentially with um, genetic variants in one of the desmosomal genes than in control. So today, We've invited patients and family members who are eligible and are already in the registry to donate blood samples to see if the data we see in this chart, our preliminary data, holds true in a larger sample. All right. I said this. This is the second time I'm going to show you this slide. The ARVC registry is the starting point for all our studies. Um, we use the data for all of our clinical and genetic research, including that chart I just showed you with the black and red dots. That came from samples people like you donated in previous years. That was the preliminary data that helped us get this federal grant. So today we're collecting um, blood samples for DNA and serum as part of the general ARVC registry study, in addition to the specific inflammatory marker study I just talked about. So again, how you can help. <laughs> if you're an ARVC or a pa patient or family member, consider joining the registry. You don't have to come to Baltimore, even though you're already here today. You sign a consent form. We ask you to complete questionnaires, send us your medical records, check in with Crystal via phone or email once a year, and consider joining sub-studies you're eligible for when you're invited. I did want to, um, I'm a geneticist at heart, a geneticist and a genetic counselor. Many of you have donated DNA over the years as part of the registry. I want you all to know um, that, as I think Brittany's talked to many of you about in clinic, we are participating in an international genome-wide association study a GWAS study. A GWAS is an approach to compare the genomes from many different people, both with and without ARVC, 
define genetic markers, genetic modifiers associated with a particular risk of disease. And so uh, this study is being led by Peter Van Tintelen, who's a geneticist in the Netherlands. He just sent me the preliminary data last week. I am so excited about it. I am really looking forward to being able to show more details next year. But my message here is thank you. Thank you to all of you who donated DNA as part of the registry over the years. Things like this would not be possible without that effort. Uh, we've also been fortunate to receive uh, money from the NHGRI, which is another part of NIH, to fund a um, randomized three-arm clinical trial of um, evaluating two complementary approaches to shifting the, uh, the primary genetic counseling session to post-test. So you come see Brittany when you already have your genetic test results in hand. We think that's the most useful. I'm only showing this slide today because if you schedule a new genetic counseling appointment as a first-time genetic counseling patient, we'll be inviting you to join this study, and we hope you'll consider it. All right, other studies you may be invited to join soon if you're in the registry. Um, we will uh, be conducting exercise history interviews and pregnancy history questionnaires for people with desmoplaque invariance, um, as Dr. Gasparetti me mentioned. If you have PKP2 and ARVC and are in the registry, Crystal is reaching out now to invite people to participate in an observational natural history study um, that is sponsored by one of these corporate partners specifically to inform gene therapy trial development. And for everybody with ARVC, we're all, as a community, trying to wrap our heads around the path forward in working on gene therapy clinical trials. Um, Emma Schopp, who is a genetic counseling student working with me, who is here today, is conducting an interview study of attitudes towards thoughts about, opinions about participation in gene therapy clinical trials. And so those invitations have also been coming out from Crystal. All right, and I'll just end by thanking all of you for your research participation. I hope everything we've gone through this morning has shown how important it is that all of us work together. You're our partners. Without you, progress would not have been possible, and how you can help. <laughs>